Today, my dad's gonna show us how a master chef turns a simple weeknight dish into a gourmet meal. Pan fried pork chops. It's literally the best pork chop I've ever had. So get ready because this video is packed with simple tips and techniques you can use to level up your cooking right away, starting with how to prep the pork. First, we'll start by squeezing and pat drying our pork. My dad tenderizes this meat by pounding the pork with the blunt side of the knife. He'll then turn it 90 degrees and continue pounding it, which creates a crosshatch pattern. You can also use a meat mallet here. The reason we do this is because pork chops are a leaner and therefore tougher cut of meat. Pounding it breaks down the muscle fiber so it's more tender, but we don't want to pound so hard that the meat becomes a shapeless mush. Next, we'll introduce the lean meat to flavor by mixing together the perfect marinade. We have all of these ingredients listed on our blog at madewithlao.com, along with step by step instructions and video clips to guide you as you make the recipe at home. Next, massage and marinade into your meat for about 5 minutes. We want to make sure it's well combined. Now we'll prep our aromatics. We'll start by lightly crushing, peeling, and mincing our garlic. Next, we'll julienne our ginger by cutting roughly 8th inch slices, then laying them flat and slicing them into thin strips. Afterwards, we'll slice both our onion halves into quarter inch slices. To level up your confidence in cutting all kinds of ingredients, check out our comprehensive masterclass on knife techniques in the Kanto Cooking Club. To get access, check out club.mimithlao.com. Have you locked in the juice of the pork? If the word pa sounds familiar, it's because we use the word to describe various meats. For beef, we combine it with ngao to make the word ngao pa or steak. For chicken, we combine it with gai to make the word gai pa or cutlet, which we made last week in our chicken thigh video. For pork, we combine it with ju to make the word ju pa or pork chop. What do all these meats have in common? They are slabs, cooked whole, not cut up until ready to serve. You can cut it up in the kitchen, reassemble it on the serving plate and bring it out, or cut it up at the table like my dad. After heating the pan for 2 to 3 minutes, add your oil. We don't advise heating first with a nonstick pan. Instead, you should add oil first, then turn on the heat. To prevent burning, my dad likes to heat up the pan, but then turn it off when placing in the pork. How do I limit or reduce the oil splatter bonanza when dropping the pork chops into the pan? Mm 
咁擺落去炸嘅聲，嗰啲油就炸飛曬出嚟咯。好食嘅咩？我聽見啦。哇！好食。咁就係咯，就開翻中火佢。After frying for about six to seven minutes, we'll flip our pork chops. You'll want to look for a nice golden brown crust that's formed. We'll continue frying for another four to five minutes before flipping one more time. Can you explain why you flip twice? First time 我就知道佢已經起黃色啦，就反轉佢，反轉佢之後咧，我就反煎嗰邊，煎到嗰邊係夠夠咩噶啦，我就反，我就再反翻轉頭先嗰度，個開頭嗰度熟咗之後咧，佢會有啲汁咁就流出啦嘛，我再反翻轉佢，翻翻轉再煎翻嗰邊，嗰啲水分去咗。To reiterate, we'll flip the pork chops two times to dry out the moisture that's built up on the first side, resulting in a crispier crust. If you've ever stepped foot in a Hong Kong diner, you probably wouldn't be surprised to see pan-fried pork chops or jin ju pa as part of a lunch or dinner set menu. But did you know it's also commonly served as a savory breakfast option? You can easily incorporate this dish into any mealtime and it'll work. For a hearty breakfast, throw the pork chops on a bed of rice with a fried egg. To make a classic Hong Kong diner lunch set, serve with rice, a few pieces of veggies, and a side soup like borscht. For dinner, follow my dad's lead and serve the pork chops family style with your favorite side dishes. After flipping the pork chops the second time, we'll let it cook for about a minute. Then create a little well to add your ginger and garlic. Now, if you put some garlic in it, put some garlic in it. 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 Finally, we'll add one teaspoon of cooking wine. Then turn off the heat and cover for about a minute to let the flavors get to know each other. Here, the cooking wine plays an important role. It binds to alcohol-soluble flavor compounds that would otherwise prefer to stay in the background. When we add it to the marinade, alcohol carries and infuses oil-soluble and water-soluble flavors that don't naturally want to mix. It also helps to counteract possible gaminess in fish and meat. When we add it during the cooking process, the alcohol increases the release of aromatic molecules, enhancing the sensory experience of the dish. We apply both techniques in this recipe for maximum impact. If you omit the cooking wine, the pork will still taste amazing. You'll miss Miss out on these effects of using alcohol, but you can use water or any kind of broth in the last steaming step to at least get the effects of the steam cooking. Hồng Tươi, mời mời, lọc lão hẹt chi phá luôn. Look at that, look at that crispy, crunchy. YouTube thinks you'll like this recipe next. Let's see if they're right. A huge thank you to our walk stars and all of our chefs in the Canto Cooking Club.